Uh, we're going to begin in speaking about a very, very common, very, very popular, some people say about 15% of Americans have this disease called psoriasis. Everybody's heard of psoriasis? Somebody knows somebody with psoriasis? I'm sure. Very, very common. Uh, so I mentioned that four levels of treatment that we use for psoriasis, topical treatment, so you have less expensive creams, more expensive creams. It's actually a new one that just came out. Uh, that's uh, a vitamin D3 derivative. It's pure vitamin D that can be used uh, topically on these. And then, boy, there's also an oral vitamin D that's available. We have up-to-date technology in our office. I like to get what is rational, what's been tested, what's new, what's, what's great and up-to-date for us. And we have a narrowband UVB machine, which instead of in the past, you'd have to take pills and wear these ugly looking glasses for a day. We have uh, a laser, unique, one, one wavelength kind of light. It's like a light booth that you walk into and it makes it so that all the side effects of that broadband light that used to be used are no longer there. So you just get that one wavelength, so it's much more effective <coughs> and less side effects, less risk, less risk for cyst skin cancer with a narrow band UVB technology. Has been very, very successful. We've had people coming. It takes a year sometimes. It takes a month or two sometimes, depending on the disease. But it's successful for psoriasis. It's been more successful, and we'll see later on, for vitiligo. People, Michael Jackson disease, people that lose their color, lose a pigment in their skin. That takes a while, I must say. It's, we kind of use it slowly because one can burn with this. It's, it's very powerful lights. There's 74 light bulbs in there shining on you. It's much more intense than a tanning booth. Um, but it's phenomenal for people that are losing pigment on their face and on their hands and don't want to show things. But we'll get more into that later. There are oral medications we can use for this, mostly immunosuppressants, because it's related to the immune system psoriasis. So if we, it's a hyperimmune system, if we slow down our immune system, then the psoriasis melts away. Things like methotrexate, cyclosporine, and then we have the brand new stuff coming out. There's about 12 of them out now called Biologics. And what they, they vary, some of them, like Humira, if you've heard of Humira, and Brel, you can just, hi, welcome. You can have a seat right over here. Um, Humira, and Brel, you, you probably see commercials on TV for these things. They're good for rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spinal lines are great for psoriasis as well. They're very expensive though. We usually have to try one of these regimens before the insurance companies nowadays let you try something like this. Some of these cost about $30,000 a year just to administer. <clears throat> Some of them are quite phenomenal though. I've had patients that just don't do well with any of these. And one of these you can take intravenously, you get an initial shot, and then you get it once every eight to 12 weeks. And that's it, psoriasis is gone. You just get an infusion for one hour every eight to 12 weeks, and it suppresses everything. It's pretty phenomenal. You don't have to remember smearing creams on this and that. You know, just one shot, done. You know, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, expensive, but has a role in, in what we do. It's sort of a cousin of psoriasis called seborrheic dermatitis. Very, very common. Even I have it, I admit. And we can use light topical steroids. People who can't afford or don't have insurance, don't have a prescription, can use 1% hydrocortisone over the counter. Twice a day, one you know, for a week, 10 days, uh, 14 days, it depends how severe it is. Here you see a little redness and scaling in her folds right over here. And then it goes a little bit redness and scaling in the brow. It's kind of like a little T-zone thing. And then in the chin area. And uh, very often it appears in the scalp. Some people call it dandruff. Dandruff can be just a dry scalp, but it can also be associated with redness and inflammation. It's kind of like a suppressed psoriasis. There are new medications also called uh, T1 immunosuppressants. One is called Elidel, another one is called Protopic, which are non-steroid immunosuppressants. So if we use those in a short course, small period of time, you can have people don't want to use steroids, they're afraid of the side effects. We would never use such strong steroids on the face anyways. Um, this is another option, and then there are shampoos too. I'm not saying to shampoo your face by any means, but there's shampoos for the scalp that one can use either over the counter or prescription. Uh, the prescription ones obviously cost is a big thing for us as well as, as efficacy and people actually doing what we tell them to do. It's important. You can't just give a prescription and expect, uh, expect somebody to do it. Um, people have different schedules. Different, you know, Teenagers have different abilities to do things depending on their sports schedule. So um, there are different shampoos even over the counter. T-cell, T-gel, head and shoulders we'll recommend sometimes. Or actually what I like is a combination of them. You use two together for this scalp, that's what's ideal. Any questions? Okay. Move on to the next slide. Eczema, we see eczema daily, if not uh, five times a day in the office. It's worse at this time of the year in winter. 
Uh, we live in heated areas, <coughs> not usually radiant heat, okay? Not usually radiant heat. It's a dry, forced air or gas kind of heat, and it dries out our skin as well. So there's patch testing that we can do. We can actually put little wells on the back, 40, 50, 75 little wells, leave them off for a couple of days, and see exactly what's causing this eczema, what's a person allergic to. We use, again, topical corticosteroids. We actually use quite often in our office shots. We'll just give a, a, a small 1 cc of a steroid shot, and then you don't have to think about smearing this once a day, twice a day, three times a day. You're done. One shot, and, and that's it. And the main thing here is not to wash your hands too often. The more you wash your hands, the more you expose your hands to soaps, etc., the more they're going to dry out, the more they're going to break out and look like this. <coughs> Do the shots work as well as the uh, topicals? They do. Okay. You know, we give them to, it's a good question, we give them to their different strengths, but it's usually, Kenalog is what it's called, Kenalog, and it's trimcinol and cortisone. We can give it half cc, one cc, one and a half cc's, and uh, sometimes that's all we do. Just give that, and it just melts away because it goes through the body. And, it, and you're not taking it orally, so there's no side effects of ulceration in your <coughs> It's in your muscle, either in the arm, and like, and it's a very small, thin needle. It's not the big, you know, basting needle or anything like that. No, no need to be afraid. Uh, people usually, you know, shy away from shots, but these aren't the big, big kind of shots. So here's another type of dermatitis, another type of red, we're in this sort of category here, red scaly lesions um, that we see very, very often, especially in children. Um, and I believe next we'll have one, a picture of a little child. And um, you'll see it's very common in the elbow folds over here right, on, on, in the ankles, um, and really it could be all over the body, you know, uh, patients have come into our office and babies have come in all red, and we do see geriatric patients, we see pediatric patients, we see the whole gamut, it's kind of why I went into dermatology, is I really, really like to see the broad range of all patients, and uh, very easily treated, again, with controlling our bathing habits, not too much hot water, not too many irritant soaps, um, Neutrogena Dove, Cetaphil, the basic you know, brands that are marketed out there that are for sensitive skin are what we want these patients um, to stay away from. It, you see in the adult, it uh, manifests more in the folds over here, chest and face area, and she's not a happy camper. So we spend a lot of time, patient education, talking with patients, explaining to them what could be, you know, vacuuming their carpets like you see over here every day, uh, staying away from dust mites, taking the teddy bears out, watching their, pet, their pets, not wearing wool clothing. We have a whole list that we give, it's on our, it's on our website. It's also um, in a hard copy that we offer them in addition to pamphlets from the American Academy of Dermatology that we go over them. And we really spend 20 minutes, half hour, initially trying to prevent this because there could be that one thing that just sets, puts, sets the fire in the skin and all this is exacerbated.